Hi, this is Steve Pavlina, and today I'm going to talk to you about creating abundance. How to shift away from a scarcity mentality and towards an experience of reality where you're just putting out this constant abundance vibe, and that's what you're getting back. That's what you're experiencing in life. So, not having a situation where you feel like you're lacking the resources you need to experience what you want to experience in life. Having just absolute, total abundance of resources in your life, of of money flowing through your life, of opportunities, of friendship and connection with other people. Whatever you want to experience there, it's, it's absolutely present in your life and you can just simply tap into it and enjoy it. Okay? Instead of feeling a state of lack where what you really want is somewhere outside of your reality and it's, you're missing out on it. Now, one of the things people say to me often is like, they'll say, okay, Steve, it's easy for you to experience a state of abundance. Look, you, you have lots of money flowing through your life, you have lots of friends and so on. So for you to say, you know, here's how to create an abundance mindset, well, you know, obviously it's happening because you've got money, you've got friends and stuff, you have all these resources, you have business opportunities, and that therefore, of course, you're going to feel abundant. As if that stuff is what caused my feeling of abundance. And what do I say to those people? I say, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. That is exactly the opposite of the truth. In fact, anyone who says that kind of thing is simply giving their power away to circumstances. They're projecting their power outside themselves. They're giving their power away to money or to relationships or to opportunities. And they're saying that all those things outside themselves are stronger than they are. And that's a really, really stupid thing to do. That is exactly a thing that arises from the scarcity mindset itself. Okay, if you are mired in scarcity, that's how you will think. You will think that money itself, for example, will make you feel more abundant. But is that really true? I mean, think about that for a moment. What do you think would happen to you if, say suddenly, out of the blue, your finances improve by a factor of 10? Let's say you have 10 times as much money in the bank, and you have um, all your debts gone, it's all wiped out, and you have 10 times as much income. How would you actually feel? Well, some people would probably say, yeah, I'd feel, I'd love that, I'd feel excited. But really, I'd say what you'd most likely would feel is you'd probably feel a little anxious and stressed because you're, you're being taken outside your comfort zone. If you've never had that experience before, it's going to be something new for you and you're not going to be used to it. And you're going to be thinking things like, like, what happened? How did I get here? How did I reach this point? How do I hold on to it? How do I avoid losing all this money? How do I avoid sinking back to the old place I was? You're going to be a little nervous. You're going to be a little scared. And even if you got used to it after a while, it's not going to automatically create a feeling of abundance. You could very easily just raise your expenses up to that level and be right where you were. Okay, you, may, you, may, you may have a situation where your, your wants begin to pull ahead of your ability to fulfill those wants. You know, we just get greedier and greedier, and you're back in your scarcity state again. Because now you have desires you still can't fulfill. More money is not going to solve the problem. That's certainly not what solved the problem for me. Okay, the truth is, if you want to create an experience of abundance, you can do that no matter where you are financially. It does not matter. I mean, what, what worked for me, I started on this path when I was deep in debt. Okay? Uh, about 10 years ago, I was $150,000 in debt, and I was having a negative cash flow, I was about to declare bankruptcy, and I was getting kicked out of my apartment because I couldn't pay the rent. And I was broke. Didn't really have any money at the time. And I was very frustrated because I'd been on this path for years and it was just sinking further and further debt. It wasn't working. I was trying to run a business in a way that just was not making any money. And I just got mired in this idea of financial scarcity. And there was like so much stuff I wanted to experience in life and it was always like, I can't afford it. You know, I, it's always outside my ability to, to bring it to me because of the lack of financial resources. And I thought, this is really lame to be living this way. And one day I walked down to the beach. I was living in Marina del Rey, California at the time. I just went for a walk on the beach to kind of clear my mind. And I sat down on the beach near the Santa Monica Pier, and I just looked out at the ocean. And I thought, huh, you know, this is kind of nice. It's kind of a beautiful place. I mean, the, the surf is coming in, and the, you know, the waves are crashing against the seashore, and I'm sitting on the nice warm sand, the sun's shining, there's seagulls flying overhead, there's children playing further down the beach, people are having fun on the Santa Monica Pier. And I thought, you know, this part of the reality th that I'm experiencing is not so bad. You know, I come down the beach any time and I can enjoy that. But when I go back and have to deal with my finances, it feels so disempowering. And I thought, you know, why? Why do I have to let my negative financial situation ruin my entire life? There's so much good stuff going on in my life. For example, I was doing a lot of distance running at the time. And I thought, you know, I can do a 15-mile run. Why don't I feel good about that instead of feeling bad about being $150,000 in debt? 
and just start focusing on the good things in my life. And what happened is, like, I, I looked out at the ocean and I said, you know, this is kind of cool. I get to come into the ocean and enjoy it anytime I want. And I said, at least you're free. You know, at least, at least you, Mr. Ocean, don't call me ten times a day saying, when can you make a payment? And I, I started thinking, why am I putting so much energy in, a, in the, the crappiest part of my life? Why am I feeding that so much time and energy and attention? It's not really helping. It, was, it wasn't making it better. I thought, why don't I just take my energy and just simply withdraw it from that and practically ignore all that negative stuff in my life and just focus on all the stuff I want, all the stuff I want to experience. And it was a way of basically saying, you know, I'm going to stop feeding my power to all this negativity. I'm going to stop feeding my power to all the stuff that's outside my control. I'm going to withdraw the power back into myself and then feed it into things I want to experience. So I started focusing on, like, what do I want to experience? I want to have an experience of just abundance in life. I want to experience creativity. I thought, what do I really want to do with my time? What I really want to do is I, I wanted to create a, a cool computer game that people would enjoy. So I focused my time on doing that. And I, I shifted my energetic frequency that I was putting out in such a way that I was able to succeed on that path. And a year later, my financial, my financial situation was stable. And several years later after that, it was extremely abundant because I learned how to start shifting what I was putting out. Now, now what do I mean by the vibration you're putting out? Well, many people talk about this thing called the abundance mindset or the scarcity mindset. I think that's a rather misleading way of describing this phenomena. And, that, you know, that's the way I've used in the past kind of casual, in casual conversation. I might talk about abundance mindset or scarcity mindset. I know I've written at least one article where I talked about the abundance mindset. But it's not so much a mindset because the mindset makes you think it's something up here in your mind, like a thought process. That's part of it, but that's really the least important part of it. And if you get stuck in thinking that I have to think about money a certain way and that that will create abundance, it's not going to work, really. You'll, you'll just hold yourself back and you'll run yourself in circles for years. Believe me, I tried that, okay? It doesn't really work. Better way of thinking about it, I think, is in terms of an abundance heart set. It's really more of a feeling than a thought. Okay? And I'd say a better way of thinking about it than that, even, is thinking of it as an abundance vibe that you're putting out. Okay, think about, um, imagine you're going to a party. Okay? And you go to a party and you're meeting some new people you've never met before. And at that party, you, you get a certain feeling off each person you're connecting with. So you go, oh, okay, over here, here's a woman who's like very gregarious and outgoing and fun-loving. And, oh, yeah, I'd love to connect with her. She's, she, seems, she, she seems like a lot of fun. I can tell she's just putting out a fun vibe right away. Over here, there's some guy sitting in the corner kind of by himself. He looks a little shy, a little aloof. You're getting kind of a, a, a disconnected, aloof vibe from that guy. Over here, oh, my God, that guy over there looks kind of creepy to me. You know, that doesn't have a good feel to me. I don't think I want to talk to that person. And you notice, like, some people have put, they put out vibes that just draw you in, they just attract you. Other people put out vibes that they kind of repel you. But really, the vibe that people are putting out is something you can pick up even at a distance. You, you pick it up from their body language, you just pick it up from the energetic signature that they're putting out. Now, you yourself are also putting out this energetic signature. Okay? Your whole being is, you could say, vibrating or resonating at a certain frequency. Okay, and abundance is a different frequency of energy that you're putting out than scarcity. And it's a frequency that you create. Now, anything you do where you're assigning more power to something outside yourself than within yourself, that's part of the scarcity, the scarcity vibe. Okay? When you withdraw the power into yourself and you maintain the power to create what you want to experience, that's an abundance vibe. Because now you have the power to manifest or create whatever you want. That is abundance. Okay, knowing that you can create whatever you want, that's abundance. Feeling like you can't create something you want, that's scarcity. Okay, so that power must be withdrawn back into you to really have an abundance vibe. How do you do this? Okay, how do you do this? How do you actually create this abundance vibe if you're not already experiencing it? Well, I mean, I, I give you a little bit of insight into that where you can start focusing on some of the things you're grateful for in life and start focusing on your attention on the things you want to experience. Withdraw that power away from the negativity back into yourself and start putting it back out there again in a positive form. Okay, now I'll, I'll give you another little more formal process that I use still to this day and it works like a charm. It is, but I'll tell you, it's going to be a little difficult to apply, not because it's difficult to actually do. It's very, very simple and very, very easy to actually do it. But it's difficult to get your mind around the idea that this is how reality works. That reality works in such a way that we really are in this matrix of sorts that's responding to our vibration, that's responding to the energetic signature we're putting out. 
When you put out an abundance signature, your reality will respond by bringing you experiences that match that state of abundance. Okay, like massive opportunities, you know, coming to you in business. Um, plenty of friendships coming to you, like all the friends you could possibly, um, you know, have. Lots of love coming to you. Just lots of joyful experiences, new experiences, growth experiences. Plenty of money flowing through your life. Okay, always being able to afford what you want, what you want to buy or experience. Never having to say I can't afford it. Okay, that that's that's the type of reality that is manifested when you put out an abundance vibe consistently and dominantly. When you put out a scarcity vibe, you get things like bills that are bigger than your paycheck, and overdue payments, and 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 you know massive debt that feels very disempowering to you because you're just giving your power away to circumstances beyond your control. You're making yourself powerless. So reality says, okay, you want to be powerless? I will show you that you're powerless. That's exactly what happens. All right, so here's, here's a process you can use to help yourself shift your vibration. And I'm going to explain this in the context of creating an abundance mindset, but really you can use this to shift your vibration in any way, shape, or form. What I do is I'll just sit down and lie down on my couch, I'll lie down on my couch, or I'll sit down on my couch, and I'll close my eyes, and I'll simply imagine the new reality I want to experience. Okay, so if I want to have money flowing through my life, then fine, I'll imagine that. Okay, and I'll imagine it as real and feeling good to me. And, and it's, I'm already there, and I'm seeing it fully associated, so imagining whatever scene I'm seeing, I'm seeing it through my own eyes. I'm not imagining myself in the scene and looking at it through a third-person perspective. Okay, so I, could, I feel the emotions more strongly when, I, when I'm seeing it through my own eyes. And it's not the visualization that's so important. The visualization is merely a tool to create the vibration, to create that feeling. So I have, to get to, I have to get in that mindset of asking myself, okay, if I was already there, how would I really feel about reality? So if I already had like massive financial abundance, how would I feel? What is the feeling that would come up in me? So I have to imagine different scenarios. Okay, like I can go shopping and I, I, I have massive amounts of cash in my wallet, I can buy whatever I want. My bank account is always refilling, even after, after I spend stuff. Like what would that feel like? Just like living in a, my dream home, you know, um, having like any kind of experience never being blocked from me because of a lack of money. Like what would that feel like? Being able to travel wherever I want to go on a moment's notice. What would that feel like? Having lots of loving relationships around me, all the friendships I could possibly want to connect with, all the intimate connections around me I want to have in my life. What would that feel like? You know, having lots of love in, with other people, lots of caring. What would that feel like to be there? And for, you know, maybe a few minutes during that time I do it, I'm able to experience what that would feel like. Okay, I don't know it'll feel like, wow, I would feel like I'm so lucky. Like I, I want, you know, how did I, how did I get so lucky to have these kinds of experiences? I would wake up feeling absolutely grateful. I would go to bed feeling grateful. I might even be like so grateful, I just, I start crying because I'm thinking like, like this is amazing to have this kind of life. Like I'm so lucky, I'm so fortunate. So I just kept focusing on that feeling of being so lucky and so fortunate. Now, the first time you do this, you may only be able to hold, you may be able to lock into that emotional signature for maybe 30 seconds or a minute. You know, it might, have, it might take you a while to like visualize the right way of thinking about it such that you're, you're creating those feelings. Okay, but just keep doing it again. Do it 20 minutes every day. Okay, every day. Now, the goal here is to get good at doing it during those 20 minutes. So you really get good at locking onto that emotional feeling. Eventually, you will figure something out. You will picture some scene that will make you feel just like so abundant. Okay, like for me, it might be just like picturing a travel scene. Like I'm going you know, on a trip somewhere and I just have, like can afford any experience I want. Another thing for me I love to picture is just like having intimacy abundance, like a wonderful feeling of connectedness with other people in my life. So that I care about these people in my life, and they care about me, and we know each other really well, and like all the walls of social conditioning are just dropped between us, so we're like open books to each other, and we just, we encourage the heck out of each other. And having, you know, a number of different friends where I can have that type of connection with, and they can have it with me. And just feeling so loved and supported, and other people that I can really love and support in what they're doing and how they're living their lives as well. It's that, that sense of just feeling really good about life. Okay? Being able to create that feeling. Now, for that 20 minute period, you may be able to experience it you know, for longer longer periods of time. Like you, you'll get good at it. After a few weeks of doing this, you'll get pretty good at it. And you should be able to experience some of those feelings, you know, different variations on them, all different little subtle aspects of that, of that vibration you're trying to create for you know, maybe 15 out of the 20 minutes. Good. Now, the more you do this, what's going to happen is you're going to start to feel that vibration come up elsewhere in your life. Like even when you're not doing these little visualization exercises, 
you're going to start to feel it again. Like later in the day, you'll go, oh, I'm feeling that abundance state again. It just gets triggered. Okay, that 20 minutes is really just a practice session. It's a conditioning session. Now, I say 20 minutes minimum. I really think that's about the minimum you want to do. But you can do it anytime. Like I'll do it when I'm driving my car. I just think about the feelings. I just think about the situations I want to experience and the feelings that give rise to it. And I just allow myself to feel it. Don't play any music on the radio because it might be distracting. Just, just feel it. Just put yourself in that state where you feel it. Or if you're standing in line somewhere, just feel it. When you're waking up in the morning, okay, try to create that feeling right as you're getting up. When you, as soon as you lie down and go to bed, make it a priority. Just like create the feeling as you're going to sleep. Whatever feeling you want to shift into, create it right as you're going to bed. So I would just do that religiously. The more you know, often you can do this, the better. Sometimes I'll just set aside an hour or an hour and a half just to lie down on a bed and, th and think about what I want to experience in life and create these feelings of abundance. Now, you do this, and what will happen is, you know, these, like I said, these feelings will begin to infect more and more of your daily life. Pretty soon, after a period of several weeks, maybe a few months, depending on how, how much you practice this and how well this feeling is spreading throughout your life, and how much else you have else you have in your life that's working against this feeling? Okay, eventually you reach the point where, like, more than half the time, you're feeling these feelings. Okay, where it's getting just it's becoming stronger and stronger. It's becoming a part of you, and you're shifting your dominant vibration. Okay, if initially these 20 minutes are just a small slice of your vibration. It's not going to have that much of an impact. The the real goal here is to shift your dominant vibration. So you're going through most of the day feeling abundant. Okay, this is like this the way I'm behaving now, this is how I feel normally. This is how I wake up feeling, this is how I go to bed feeling. This is how I often feel when I'm interacting with my friends. I just feel happy. I feel excited about life. I feel passionate. Because I'm experiencing so much of what I want. You know, it's, it, the life I'm I'm creating is is like within my power to manifest. So I don't have this feeling like there's stuff out there that's frustrating me because I can't create it. I just know I can create it. Okay, so getting to that place where that becomes your default state of being. Yeah, that's, that's the goal here with doing these exercises. Now, many people come to me and they say, you know, Steve, I, I, I'm trying to apply these law of attraction ideas. I'm doing affirmations. And, you know, I'm, I'm reading my goals each day. And I, I just can't seem to manifest anything. It doesn't seem to be working for me. I think the law of attraction may not really be true. And I just look at the person and I'm like, you know, Okay, what are you trying to manifest? Well, I'm trying to manifest a really um, a life of passion and excitement and, and a total abundance, and I, I want to have all that in my life. I'm like looking at this person saying, this person's exuding exactly the opposite vibe. You're exuding kind of this disconnected, you know, boredom, apathy state with, with me, or at least a, a kind of a low level of contentment. That's not what abundance feels like. That's not what passion feels like. Where's the feeling? Okay, the, if the feeling isn't there, it's not going to manifest. It has to be, the vibe has to be being put out by that person. Okay, so I have to explain to these people, it's not just about reading affirmations. I, for the most part, I think reading affirmations is a waste of time. I, I don't even bother with that. Um, unless somehow that works for you, like reading affirmations in a really passionate state helps you get you really worked up and get to create that feeling. Okay? This little 20 minute visualization I gave you, that's just one of many ways you can use to create that feeling. Some people do it by shifting their physiology, okay? like standing a certain way, breathing a certain way. I find that th that works for some things, but it can be a little bit limiting because I'm like, how, how would I stand if I was feeling abundant? I don't really associate a certain body language with that. And the, the truth is, I don't think the body language matters all that much. At least in my experience, it hasn't. I think the body language is more of an effect. And to focus on that too much of a cause as a cause, I think it makes it more difficult to manifest abundance because you'd have to have your body in that state like longer longer periods of time each day. I mean, it, it would be... You'd be like focusing on trying to get your body in that place each day. What I think is a little easier to focus on the thoughts, because then they'll just arise naturally. It's easier to do that when you're just sitting in your car thinking about it. Get the, you know, give, give rise to the feeling. But really, if the body language stuff works for you, if like standing a certain way and, and focusing on that several times a day works for you, by all means use it. Okay? The, the real idea here is that you need to do whatever it takes to create that vibration and to make it a dominant part of your daily reality. Okay, now... What's going to happen? What's going to happen next? Once you start getting this vibration and it starts becoming more and more dominant, gradually, it's not like necessarily going to be an abrupt thing, but the more you shift into that new vibration, the more you start putting out a different vibe, the more things in your external reality, the matrix of reality around you, are going to begin to change. And they're going to change in two primary ways. 
initially. First of all, you're going to start feeling more and more of a disconnect with the things in your reality, the people, the places, the, possibly the job you have, the experiences that you've been used to. You're feeling more of a disconnect with those parts of your reality that do not resonate with the new vibration you're trying to create. So if you're trying to create an experience of abundance, anything that keeps knocking you back down into a scarcity state, scarcity vibration, you're going to get more and more frustrated with it, and you're going to feel more and more disconnected with it. Certain people in your life, you might feel more and more disconnected from. Okay, that's, that's normal. That's supposed to happen. On the other hand, new things are going to start arriving in your life. New opportunities, new people, new experiences are going to start showing up in your life that are not congruent with your old vibration, but they are congruent with the new one you're creating. Okay, so you're going to start, like if you're focusing on financial abundance, you're going to have a, a new business opportunity may show up. And at your old state of scarcity thinking, it would never come to you, or you would never even recognize it, you would never capitalize on it. But now it shows up, and it's a match for your new state of abundance. Now here's the tricky part. Okay, this part you may not want to hear, but I assure you it's true. The next step, okay, there's first, the first step we have to go through is creating that, that new vibration. But that's not enough. That is not enough by itself. If that is all you do, you will not get there. Okay? The second key element is that in order to fully shift your reality now, not just your internal vibration that you're putting out, but actually allow the reality around you to shift, you're going to have to exercise courage. No matter what, I guarantee you will have to exercise courage. There is no way to shift into that new reality without doing something brave. Okay? Without doing something that gives you a little bit of fear, at least. Maybe a lot of fear, depending on how, how big a shift you're trying to make. Okay? Disconnecting with your old relationships and anything you're connected to in your old reality is going to take courage. Being able to connect with the things in your new reality is going to take courage. Okay? Anything that the... the Think of it like this. Think of it like this. You are in a certain comfort zone right now. And your comfort zone is simply what you're experiencing. If you're assuming you've been experiencing things in your life for a certain length of time, like certain relationships, a certain career, um, certain financial situation, you've gotten used to it. Okay? You're comfortable with it. Even though it may not be what you want, it's within your comfort zone. It's a familiar experience. If you want to shift over to a new place of being, that is a new vibration, it's a new reality, it's a new experience, and therefore is outside your comfort zone. You are not going to be comfortable with it. So when these things start showing up in your life, they're going to give you a feeling of discomfort, which you may interpret as fear. And you may be scared to take advantage of some of these opportunities. You're like, when I would shift my vibration financially, I would get some business deals that would show up, and they would be bigger than anything I'd done before. It would make me a little nervous. Okay, but if I get nervous, I'm shifting my vibration back into scarcity. So I have to go back and like, okay, what's this abundance mindset? Well, that's going to include some confidence. So I have to put myself back there. And I, have to exu I have to exercise the courage to take advantage of those, those deals that came to me. On the other side, I have to exercise courage to disconnect from all the stuff in my life that doesn't resonate with my new vibration of abundance I'm trying to create. Okay? You do have to take action here. That's where the action comes in, is being able to summon the courage to really follow your heart. That when you created this heart set, this new vibration, you've got to follow it now. You have to let it lead you. Okay? You have to honor it. If you keep going back to the old vibration, you're simply going to block what manifests. Okay? The manifestations are, start, are going to start showing up. They're going to come in a way that's going to make you uncomfortable. Okay? That's where you have to just say, all right, I've, you know, I know courage is required. I just have to be brave and I've got to do it. I've got to let go of the old and I've got to start embracing the new. For example, this year, I decided to focus on creating intimacy abundance in my life. Okay, now what I, what I mean by that is, for many years of my life, you know, most of my adult life, I had a very deep and in, intimate connection with just one woman. Okay, that was like my intimacy part of my life. This, this one marriage, one relationship, where we were just like very deep, very, very connected here. And as I started thinking more about this abundance mindset, I, I felt a little bit out of match with this. It, was like, it didn't feel like a good fit for me anymore because I felt like, you know, I'm trying to get like all my experience of love from just one person and that's not what I'm feeling anymore. I started shifting this vibration of wanting to be just like, like surrounded by just a, you know, 
um, a radial field of love just all around me, like wanting to have these loving, deep, intimate connections with lots of people. Maybe not a huge number, but say at least like half a dozen really close, intimate friends where I can just talk to them about anything, they can talk about me about anything, we care about each other very deeply, we encourage the heck out of each other, you know, we, we inspire each other, wanting to have those kinds of connections. But then I also had the sense that, you know, if I was connecting that deeply with a woman, well, this is what, this is what happened with my wife when I first met her. I connected with her very deeply emotionally, and then it became a physically intimate relationship as well. And I thought, what would that feel like to have like multiple, multiple emotionally intimate connections, but also the possibility that there'd be multiple physically intimate connections connected with that emotional intimacy as well? And I thought, does that feel good? Does that feel like something I want to step into? Does that feel like a vibration I want to experience? So I just imagined it. What would that be like? And as I imagined, I thought, you know, that feels so good to me. It feels better than what I'm experiencing right now, just this one-on-one -on -one intimate connection, physically and emotionally. I thought, I would feel really good in that place. And I, I couldn't help but just keep thinking about it and imagining it and how good it felt. And so I started to shift in the, into that vibration. And the new experiences started coming to me. And I was like, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, I can't do that with you. I'm, I'm married. You know, and, and I would block them. And I kept blocking them and blocking them and blocking them. I'm like, whoa, you know, and I still kept focusing on that vibration, so these things kept showing up. And then I started on the other side feeling more and more of a disconnect with my wife. You know, our intimate connection was no longer satisfying to me. And why? Because I was shifting my, 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 my vibration out of this intimacy model based on just a single committed monogamous relationship. And I wanted to have really this, this feel of loving relationships around me. Like, that's what I was moving into manifesting. But as it started showing up, I started blocking it. Well, eventually I realized what I was doing and I thought, you know, I do want to step into this vibration. I do want to allow my reality to be congruent with the person I'm becoming on the inside. And that took a lot of courage. I mean, I had to start doing things that were very much outside my comfort zone because it was not anything I experienced before. Long story short, over the past year, just all kinds of experiences came to me and I had to, I had to really push myself to keep saying yes to this kind of stuff. But it felt... It always was like a breakthrough for me when I kept saying yes. And other people would, say, would even say to me, like, Steve, I can't believe you just said that. I can't believe you did that. You know, I, I can't believe you had the courage to do that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do that. And I, I, but I realized that courage is essential. Otherwise, I'm always going to be blocking myself from creating that vibration. Long story short, you know, over the past, say, 10 or so months, I gradually shifted more and more to that vibration. And now I feel like I'm really there in my life. And it had massive consequences for my life. You know, it led to um, my wife and I separating a couple weeks ago, and us, you know, now we're in the process of getting a divorce. And even though I'm going through a divorce, I'm feeling good about it. You know, I'm, it's not, I'm not giving my power to it. It's not disempowering me. I don't feel bad about it, because I know the new vibration I'm shifting into is the right one for me. And it's, it, this new reality I want to experience is one of even greater abundance than before. And, you know, the truth is that in my relationship with, with my wife, as some friends have pointed out, we became so intimate with each other, but there was no intensity to it. It's like we became so close, we were, we were more like brother and sister with each other. And it was just the, the, uh, an experience that was different than what I was really feeling called to. It's like my heart was calling me in a different direction. And so as we, you know, as we, we talked about it, we agreed that, you know, this was, that, uh, that having the structure of a marriage around our relationship was not working for us. And we decided to let that go so that we can maintain a relationship that was deep and intimate and friendship, you know, being a big part of that. But it wasn't something that we were using to block ourselves from experiencing other things. And the truth is that because I was becoming a vibrational match for something new, my wife was as well. And she's shifting in, in a new direction herself. So it's interesting that we were, you know, by, by clinging to each other too much, too tightly, we were just blocking ourselves from both manifesting what we really wanted. And now that that, ener that trapped energy is freed up and we've let go in that area a little bit, we're both like heading off in different directions. And she's manifesting different things for herself. I'm manifesting new things for myself. But yet, we're still really good, really close friends and we still have this sense of intimacy in our lives. Now for somebody else looking in with a totally different mindset, they see our situation as something that's all screwed up or that's rid riddled with pain or negative feelings, like we should be fighting or something, and it's exactly the opposite of that. You know, we are really, genuinely still great friends. It's just that we've both shifted our vibration in a different way that we want to experience a different kind of abundance in our life. You know, it's not necessarily we're experiencing the exact same thing, it's just that 
by clinging to each other too tightly, by clinging to the familiar, by holding ourselves to our comfort zone, we were blocking ourselves from manifesting what we wanted. And we both had to express and exhibit a lot of courage to let go of the old and to embrace the new. Okay, this, is a, this is a huge part of manifesting. If you want to manifest what you want in any area, any area of your life, courage is essential. Okay? You will not get there if, you, if you're blocking yourself from doing any, anything courageous. Okay? You will have to start embracing that stuff that is coming to you from outside your comfort zone. You will have to start saying yes to it. Now, my experience is that if you, if you really are getting that new vibration and that stuff starts showing up and you say yes to it, I mean, I, I'm hard-pressed to think of a time where it did not work out. I mean, it just seems like it always works out. I, I don't like using the word always, but I, I really can't think of a time where I was really holding that new vibration and something showed up and I said yes to it and it did not work out. I'll tell you what happens, though, is when, when stuff that's a match for my old vibration shows up and I say yes to it, that's where I start having stuff not work out. That's where I go, oh, man, why did I do that business deal? You know, I shouldn't have done that. That wasn't a great deal. It's because I got sucked back in my old pattern. Okay, but when I'm really a match for the new vibration and I, I exercise courage to take advantage of the new opportunities that are showing up, whatever, whatever, whatever form they're coming to me, and I can see, like, oh, this is a match for new vibration. It's going to stretch me beyond my comfort zone. It's in line with what I'm wanting to experience. And I have to step into that state even more to accept it, to embrace it, to receive it. That's, you know, that's the stuff that just seems to always work out. That's where like the money just keeps flowing and the relationships become very deep, very intimate, very quickly, and you feel happy. See, it's not that it's not that the reality around you is going to make you feel a certain way, but it will reinforce your vibration. Okay? It'll be a match for it. There'll be this kind of congruent play back and forth between the vibration you're putting out and what your reality is sending back to you. Okay, and I, I love the state of my life right now because I really feel like I'm locked into this intimacy abundance state. And now I just have like like people just connecting with me and you know we're able to create an intimacy experience fairly quickly, you know, even just online. Like, wow, I can't believe somebody just like sent me this email out of the blue and this is what they're telling me right off the bat. You know, and, and I write back and like, you know, maybe we do a phone call later and now it's like, we already, I already feel like this person is like really good friends with me and I can just talk to her or him about anything. Very, very um, strange how different that is from the old vibration where I would block all those kinds of connections. So you have your two steps here. Okay, one, you can use some kind of visualization process, or really any process that you find that works for you, to start shifting your dominant vibe that you're putting out to one of abundance, or to one of what you want to experience, where you're really feeling it as if it's already there. Okay, you're feeling it so real, it's, it feels like it should be showing up in your reality any time now. Okay, that's the first part. Second part is that when things start to manifest, and you start to feel like out of sync with old parts of your reality, and beginning to fall into sync with new parts, new things that are showing up from outside your comfort zone, you have to exhibit courage. You have to say yes to it. Okay? You, have to, you have to summon the courage to say yes. If you go all cowardly on it, and you're going you're to shift back to your old vibration. Okay? Courage is essential. You must do that. Now, existing and living in that state of abundance, I'll tell you, it's a wonderful place to be. Okay? You will love it. You will absolutely love it. You will not regret it. Now, it, yes, you will have to go through this courage process again and again to get there, to really allow those manifestations to happen, to experience what you want to experience. Wish I could offer you an easier way, but that is essential, and that will allow you to step into that place even more, because the truth is that when you are in a state of abundance, you know that there's nothing to fear. Okay? You know that fear is an illusion, and you see through the fear. If you are feeding your fear, you're giving your power away again, and that's part of the scarcity, the scarcity vibration. Okay? The abundance vibration is fearless, okay? because there's nothing to fear, because you know anything you want to experience in life, you can create it. If you have an experience you don't want to have, you can, you can create something different. You can replace it. So that knowing and holding that power in yourself, knowing that all that power to create is within you, that you are the creator of your experience, that is part of the abundance mindset. And that is a, a mindset, or I should say a heart set, or a vibration of fearlessness. Okay, that you really want to reach the point where you are relating to your reality no longer on the basis of fear, but just on the basis of, like, I am the creator of this place. I am the creator of my experience. And therefore, you could not possibly have anything to fear because it's all your creation. And you're just here, you're here to experience and to enjoy it and to continue to allow your creative energies to flow. 
Until next time, live consciously.